My wife and I recently bought a new queen-size mattress, so I decided to build a bed frame for it. I designed it myself in SketchUp and built it out of about 60 board feet of solid walnut. Some features of the bed frame are tapered legs, hidden knockdown hardware for side rails, and special joinery on the headboard to allow for seasonal expansion and contraction of the wood. Besides a few screws in the rail hardware, the bed is held together entirely with glue, primarily with mortise and tenon joints. The mattress company politely declined to sponsor this video, so I won't mention their name, but you can probably figure out who it is. This is by far the biggest and most expensive piece of furniture that I've ever built, so it was a little bit stressful. I'm going to walk through how I built the bed from start to finish, explaining what techniques I found to be successful, and also what mistakes I made so you can avoid making them yourself in your own woodworking projects. The bed took me about 40 hours to make, so I'm breaking up the build into a few separate videos. In this first video, I'm going to focus specifically on the legs. Let's get started. The legs are approximately 2 inches square, and the back legs are taller than the front legs to account for the headboard. They are formed by laminating together three layers of 3 quarter inch thick boards, which I tried to cut out of similarly grained pieces to try to hide the lamination lines. After rough cutting out the 12 boards slightly larger than their final dimensions, I jointed and planed each to get the glue surfaces fitting together smoothly. I laminated together two legs at a time. Fortunately, they came out pretty straight, so I didn't lose a lot of material when milling them to their final sizes. I milled them to their final width and depth using the jointer, planer, and table saw. While I cut the short legs to length using the crosscut sled on my table saw, I used the miter saw for the longer legs because they were a little too big to cut precisely using the sled. With the legs cut to their final dimensions, I can cut the tapers on the bottom of each. Each leg has a taper on two sides. I marked out the start and stop points of the tapers, then used my multifunction hold down jig to actually cut them. The jig was designed by Jay Bates and serves a lot of different purposes, including edge jointing on the table saw. I really like it. I have a spare leg on the far side of the jig just to even out the clamping pressure from the hold down boards. A mistake I made here was not using a zero clearance insert. The issue is that the cutoff is in the shape of a wedge, which could really easily get trapped next to the blade and stall the motor. Kind of like this. I probably could have cut the tapers in the opposite direction so the wedge would face backwards to avoid this problem. However, I was worried that the blade coming in at such a slight angle against the face of the leg could cause the blade to deflect, which might be unsafe. With the tapers done, the next step is to cut the mortises. They are 3 eighths of an inch thick, and I had planned to use a 3 eighths inch spiral upcut bit in my router, but it turns out I don't actually have the correct collet for it. So instead, I marked out the mortises and hogged out most of the material with a 3 8 inch Forstner bit at the drill press. I made them consistently 1 inch deep by using the depth stop. Next, I used a marking gauge to mark the edge of the mortises and cleaned off the edges with a chisel. For the first few mortises, I attempted to square off the corners, which was being a huge pain. Eventually, I decided it would be easier to round off the tenons instead, which ended up saving a lot of time. After complaining on Instagram about how each mortise was taking me 10 to 15 minutes to complete, one of my followers helpfully noted that using a fence on the drill press would be a big time saver. That way, I wouldn't have to keep trying to align the drill bit with the center line of the mortise. I ended up doing this for the last few mortises, and it was much faster. At this point, I finished the eight mortises in the shorter legs. I will fully glue the tenons into these, since the cross rails in the footboard are at most seven inches wide. The strategy is a little different for the headboard though, since at 18 inches wide, it's wide enough where ignoring the effects of expansion and contraction of the cross member on the joints isn't really an option. 
Stay tuned for the next video where I'll finish building the headboard and footboard and I'll show how I account for this expansion and contraction issue. Thanks for watching.